guys. Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to uh, crimp an RJ45 connector like this onto the end of a Cat5 E cable like this. Now, you, you might have noticed that uh, this already has two connectors crimped onto the end of it, and this cable actually came like this, but you'll also notice that this cable is damaged. Now, if you watched my previous video, um, you'll know that this is damaged because I intentionally damaged it in my previous video when I was demoing this uh, cable tester. Um, you'll be happy to know in this video, we're going to show you how to use the cable tester again. Um, so anyways, let's just give it a quick test just to see that it's damaged. And then we're, so we know what not to look, what to look for um, after we fixed it. So run the tester real quick and we see only four out of the eight pins are actually working. So uh, of the tiny little wires inside this cable, um, only four of them are actually connected and the other four are broken. So we're going to fix that. Now let's take a quick look at this. Um, let me see if I can actually, if the lighting is right, I can see this on the camera. So um, let's see, it's been, oh, and I should, um, you know, full disclosure here, it, I have not done this in many, many years. It's probably been about a good 10 years since I've made one of these cables. So bear with me. All right, so um, I believe, so basically we need to make sure that the, the you know the wires on one side match the other side and there's a specific order they're supposed to go in and it has to do with like how um, you know the twisted pairs and interference and and so on so you can't just have one side match the other side they have to go in a specific order now i know that both of these sides are in the correct order now so i'm just going to look at one side and you know make the other side look the same so um and you can look this up online and i'm going to try to put a chart if you check the link in the description i'm going to probably try to put a chart on my site so um so the page that's in the, the link in the description just just check there for a chart on the colors but um look looking at this so it looks like it goes orange white brown green white blue and then um so i grabbed another cable that i have laying around and i'm, I'm gonna copy this one so um and I, I should probably just look up the chart but anyways this one was made um not very carefully and you see this uh you know the the coating on this this cable is like cut way too short this coating is actually supposed to be in here and see how there's that little indentation there that indentation is supposed to push down not only holds these little wires in place but also holds the coating so this coating is supposed to go all the way up to like here but anyways you can see the 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 order of the cables and um so i have the tab on the little tab is on this side and the little pins are on this side right and so the the, the color combo goes orange white so it's striped in solid colors and so we have orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown and that is the uh, color combo so yeah so let me just make sure i got that right here yeah so yeah orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown so that that's that's the color combo that we need um <clears throat> So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, and I'm going to, I, I mean, I could, I might not even need these at all. I'm probably not gonna use those. So I'm just gonna cut it with this, and uh, actually, with the connector on, it's a little bit harder, so it looks like I will be using these. But otherwise, these would be the tool to use. And, um, Now, these are relatively expensive. I, I don't know what counts for as expensive for you or as far as these tools go. From what I've heard, they, they go like 10 times cheaper than what I originally paid for this. And they go um, currently like a high quality version is slightly more expensive, but adjusting for time, I, I think this is on the higher end, but I'm not completely sure. So ideal telemaster if I'm reading that right. Um, but I'm going to try to put a link, like an affiliate link in the description to Amazon where you can buy one of these if, if you want to pick one up yourself. But um, I'm also going to have a write-up on, on this and how to crimp uh, Ethernet um, RJ45 plugs. And if you check the other link in the description, one link is going to be to my site and one link is going to be to uh, this, this crimper tool. So actually, I, I should, while we're at it, I should take a quick look at the crimper tool. Now you'll see this has a blade here, right? And then on this side, you have a little blade here, and then you have a solid thing here. 
So the two blades will come from both sides and just chop a cable. Whereas this one is more for like, uh, it, it, it just comes from one side. And I think that's better for like uh, stripping a cable. But, um, oh yeah, and this is for RJ11, like the old fashioned phone lines. Um, I don't think I've ever used that, but I'm not sure. Now this is RJ45, this is for like ethernet cables. Now, you don't stick anything in through this end, you stick them all in through this side. So just stick the thing in there and push it down to crimp it in place. And you'll notice there's a little thing here that pushes, uh, it pushes a little plastic thing in here to hold the wire in place. Then you'll notice in the back there's little teeth that come down and those little teeth are what push the little uh, pins down into place. So, and the, the pins have to go down into the wires to make, make contact. So, um, let's, I'm going to eye this up and try to measure this right. And I believe you should be able to measure it just, just by pushing it in. Actually, yeah, there's a little back plate here. So if you push the wire in to that back plate and just strip it off like that, that should give you the right measurement. Um, let me just check. I, maybe I've been doing it all wrong these years, or maybe I just forgot how I did it. So, um, yeah, that looks like it's, yeah, that's, that's probably about exactly right. So yeah, that, that kind of makes it easy. Having a nice tool like this does make it a little bit easier. And yeah, I think for stripping it, you did want the two blades that come together. You just don't uh, bring them too close together. And I saw someone else doing this on a video that they had made. And they had this really neat tool specifically designed just for stripping these cables. And I almost think I want to pick that up. I may... If I find it, I may put a link in the description for that as well. But I, I almost feel like I want to pick that tool up, even though I practically never make cables anymore. But here we go. So now we have all these cables. So first step is to, to pull off that, that coating there. And then we're going to stick these wires in here, which is where it gets a little bit on the tricky side. Now, the more coating you push off, the easier it is to separate these and get them in the right order and push them down flat so that you can slide them into place. But the more coating you remove, you know, the the, clo the better your chance of having something really messed up like this. So um, this is about the right length. And that, that's where it gets a little tricky. But let's try to crimp this. So if I remember, I believe we started out with uh, orange, white, orange. Um, let's see here. Orange, white, orange. And then we had our... Right, so we had orange, white, orange, green, white, blue. And th this is the tricky part of the whole thing. Because these cables are still a little bit twisted. And I actually can't even see the stripes on all. Oh, there, there we go. I can see the stripes on them. All right, so... It's hard to see the colors on the camera. It's hard for my camera to even focus in automatically on this instead of the, you know, the background. But anyways, I got them all in the right order and it's really, and once you do that, just because of how they're twisted, they end up not being the exact same length, which yeah, this is bringing back memories of, of doing this in the past. Um, so you, you have to hold these flat like this and in the right order and slide them into the connector. And um, you probably want to, I probably want to trim these a little bit so they're all even. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, which may or may not be a mistake. And that is just due to how they are. That's just due to how they're all, and apologies if that's not showing up on camera. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, so yeah, this is hard to see just because of how, how I'm holding it. So apologies for that camera angle. And um, honestly, I think this will be better for trimming the ends. I, I wish there was a way to do this without having to trim the ends. And um, yeah, so there we go. Um, all this pretty close to the same length. So they should all fit in the pins. And I'm going to try to slide this in without these... Uh, and yeah, they, they, when, as soon as I let go, they're all going to want to like return to their original positions just because of how they're twisted. And this is why it's, it's kind of easier to, and there we go. All right. So after fiddling around with it a little bit, I was able to actually push these in Let me pull this out a little bit and see how that looks when I push, I push the wires in and they all slide right into their correct spot right there. 
You notice how the the coating around the wire here goes just past that point where this thing gets pushed down to lock it in place. And um, yeah, so I basically just had to hold it at the right angle and slide each of them in really carefully, making sure that they don't just twist back to, you know, just because of how each of these wires, they're all pairs and each pair is twisted. So, you know, which is why they call it twisted pair, but um, they, they just want to twist back the other way. So you have to hold them in place like that and sort of just push them in without them twisting back. And you don't want like two pins to get swapped. Otherwise it's going to be all wrong. So anyways, that that's that's the tricky part of it. That's like the one part that's always been tricky. Otherwise, this would be ridiculously easy. Um, so now we just need to crimp it. That's the that's, this is the easy part. This is like the reward at the end or whatever. So it's going to push this thing down and it's going to push these pins into place. And then we're going to test it and see if I messed anything up. So let's stick this in here and crimp it like so. And there we go. Just push it down all the way. And there you go, it's crimped. Now we have a repaired network cable. Now, um, see, there we go, all the pins right in place. Um, this one's nice and neat. The, the coating on the wire goes all the way over to here. And um, see how that looks so much better than this stupid thing that was done wrong? I'm not sure if I made this cable or someone else did or where I even got the cable. But anyways, and you'll notice this one has a little bit of a, a coating here. So, so that way, like if you're pulling this out from somewhere, this little thing can get caught on things and be a bit of a pain. If you have these, you could put this on the wire first, then crimp your end, and then slide it back over. And this is a nice thing to protect it. Just It's kind of convenient to have. I don't have one, any of these laying around, so I haven't used it. But let's give this a try and just test it out. So we're going to put this in here. And uh, look at that. This, this is already pushed... Just Pull this up just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a, uh, yeah, just so it catches. And there we go, because it's a fresh cable. And let's see if this actually worked. Yes, perfect. Everything matches up. Um, none of the cables got swapped around while I was trying to slide it in. And I didn't get the colors wrong. So that is perfect. It's working exactly as it should. So that's how you crimp a cable. Um, other people can probably do it quite a bit faster than me. Um, I'm not doing it all day long, um, and I haven't done it in probably about, it's probably been about 10 years, at least 2010. I'm recording this in the year uh, 2020, and um, <clears throat> it's been at least since 2010, if not a little bit earlier. Um, I first learned to do this back um, somewhere around, uh, somewhere before 2005, back in, in university. I learned how to crimp cables, and then I, I had a job where I had to crimp cables every now and then when we would run cables in the data center, way back between 2007 and 2010. We did a lot of data center work, and <clears throat> we would have to make custom length cables to connect two servers. That, that would be in different racks, and they would be part of a cluster, and you'd have to just run a custom cable between them. A lot of times... Now, sometimes you're running it to a switch, so you're going to use a regular cable like this. But sometimes you're you're running, you know, server to server, directly connecting two servers, like like uh, for a heartbeat cable for a VCS cluster, for example. And in that case, you can't use a regular cable like this. You're generally going to want a crossover cable, which is where certain pins are crossed over, so so that you can just connect to to uh, you know two Ethernet ports to each other. But there you go. Um, I should put a link to both of these tools and maybe even that one in the description. There'll be affiliate links. But also, I'm going to have a link to my write-up on this. I'm going to have a little write-up on this on my site. So I'll have a link to that page in the description as well. So um, check the description. Check the links in the description. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, anything you want to say, just leave a comment down below. And, you know, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you feel like. And, um... More importantly, if you want to see more information, more um, excellent content like this, just hit the subscribe button. Um, it's it's good to just um, learn new things like this, and I'm gonna, I'm having a lot of interesting content coming up. Everything related to networks, servers, coding, Raspberry Pis, electronics, just a ton of really tech, just just a ton of tech um, content that I'm gonna be. I have a ton of videos just waiting to be published. So if you want more of that, hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna, if you wanna hit the little bell icon too, that's gonna give you an alert every time I post a new video, just so you don't miss any of the new content. 
And um, thanks for watching, guys. As always, hopefully you uh, enjoyed watching this. Hopefully you found this useful. And um, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.